Absolutely. Why? Why, Uncle Philip? It's so important. We continue <laughs> to talk about partnership, but yet it's the key to the survival to the days that we're in right now. I, as you were talking, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, what the voice of the prophets is about is remember the scripture where the woman made the prophet's chamber? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. She made a space in her life for the prophet to come and speak. And she put in it a table, yes. a chair, and a bed. A bed is a place of rest. A table is a place of um, food and, 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 and nourishment. And the chair is a place of authority. And what you're doing when you support this ministry you are creating a room in your life yes. for the voice of the prophets to speak. Do you have it Second there? Second Kings 4.10. And one day Elisha passed through Shuman, and a noble woman was there who urged him to eat a meal. So whenever he passed through, he stopped to eat a meal there. So when you pre prepare a place and provide a meal for the prophet, he takes time out of his schedule to come and sit in your house and eat with you. Fellowship. Eating is fellowship. So when you, when you prepare a meal, you are preparing that area. And um, so whenever he passed through, he stopped there to eat a meal. And she said to her husband, I know that he is a holy man of God, regularly passing through near us. Let us make a little walled upper room and put for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. The lamp is revelation. So when he comes to us, he can stay here. This woman, by giving... Now listen to me, this is really important. This woman by giving has upped her relationship level from a visit to a meal to a place to stay. She prepared a place so that when the prophet came in that area, he wanted to go and commune with someone that made him welcome. The Holy Ghost will only show up when he is welcome. That old song, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. When you and I create a room, a space in our lives for a prophetic utterance to take place, you are assuring yourself that he is going to show up and he's going to speak into your life. And that's what we're talking about. Amen. One, day, one day he came by, and she turned aside to the upper room and lay down. And he called for Gehazi, his servant. So the prophet has a servant called Gehazi. And he said, he says, call this Shumanite woman. So he called her, and she stood before him. And he said to him, say to her, what can I do for you? What may be done for you that you would have a word spoken on your um, on behalf of the king or to the uh, the captain of the army? So she's got the prophet in her house. She's made a space for him. He is visiting them regularly, and in the middle of all this blessing upon his life, he comes up with a thought, and he says to his servant, "Go ask her. What can I do for her? Can I speak to the king?" Can I talk to the army, the, the captain of the army? And listen, a crazy. And she answered, I'm living among my people. And he says, well, what can be done for her? And Gehazi, not her. Gehazi said, actually, she has no son. And her husband is old. She didn't ask for this. Someone else knew that she had a need and spoke on her behalf. And, she, and he says, well, call her. And when he had called her, she stood at the entrance, and he said, at this season, when it's time, you will embrace a son. And she says, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your servant. It was beyond what you could ever have dreamed of. Let me tell you something. When you create a place for God to inhabit, when you allow the prophet to speak into your life, when you take the time to have a bed and a chair and a lamp and a table, yes, and you take the amen. thought to make that for the, the welcoming of the Holy Spirit, what you are doing is you are setting yourself up for God to say, now what's your need? And I'm watching someone right now, and you have needs in your family right now that's breaking your heart, needs in your body, sickness, diseases in your home, and you get the money, but money doesn't fix the need that you have. Building a place for the prophet, for the voice of God to speak. And listen to this. And she says, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived against what she thought she began to, she, she was pregnant. 
And the woman conceived and bore a son at that season. And that time Elisha told her, and when the child was older, he went out one day with his father with the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to the servant, carry him to his mother. And when he'd taken him to his mother, the boy sat on her knee until noon and died. So the dream that the yeah. prophet had prophesied into her life had died. She was sitting with a dead boy in her, in her, in her arms. And I know someone, I, man, I can feel the Holy Ghost. Someone's watching just now, and you're holding a dead th something in your arms. It might be a dream that's died. It might be a business that's died. It might be a church that's died. I don't know what it is, but they're lying dead in your arms, and you're thinking, my God, what am I going to do? Let me tell you what she did. The Bible says this, and she said, send, um, and she said to the servant, carry him to his mother. And the boy died. She, verse 21, she went up and laid him down on the bed of the man of God. She went back to the prophet's chamber. She went back to where the anointing came from. And she put her dead boy, her dead dream, her dead everything on the prophet's bed. And she says, God, listen to me. I built this thing and didn't ask you for this boy. You gave him to me. And now I'm taking him back and I'm going to give him back to you because you are going to resurrect my dream. And I can, I can feel this so strongly just now that the Holy Ghost is stirring your spirit about dreams that have gone. You've given up on your son getting saved. You've given up on your marriage. You've given up on your finances. Let me tell you something, that God is going to speak and visit you through the voice of the prophet. Yes. Listen to this. I'm sorry I'm taking so long. No, it's uh, good. It's so good. It's Listen to this. Then she called her husband and sent me one of the servants of the donkeys, and I may run to the man of God. So she said, get me a donkey ready. Don't send someone, let me tell you something, unless your boy's dead, you don't have the commitment and the, and, and the skin in the game to do something about this boy. And she got on the donkey, and he says, where are you going? To him today, it neither, it's neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. She says, it'll be all right. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, lead on and do not hold back from me unless I tell you. So she went to the, and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. She went back to where the anointing came from. And I'm going to tell you right now, I can sense an anointing coming into your life again. You're holding something that's dead. Nothing worse than a broken dream. Nothing more horrendous than having to compromise what you thought was God's plan for your life. And right in the middle of this, out of the blue, I'm, I've got something else to speak on, but I'm not going to do that. When, when, when Mondo was speaking, the Holy Ghost said, if they will pre pre prepare a place for the prophets, I'm going to make the things that are dead in their life come back to life again. 